What's going on YouTube? Jeans here. Hope you guys are having an amazing day today. We are back yet again bringing you guys another guide for The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. So guys, in today's video, we have a highly requested guide. We're going to be showcasing how to get the Master Sword within this game. If you do enjoy the content anytime and you want to see more guides, leave a like on today's video. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, click that big red subscribe button so you know when all of my videos go live. But for the Master Sword, you can technically get this item at any point in the game the only requirement is going to be two full rings of stamina so you already start off with one full ring of stamina and then you just need to get the second which is going to be five stamina vessels aka 20 light of blessing so that is the only requirement you are going to need but there is another way to get this which i highly recommend doing is going through the story and doing this so what you want to do is actually get all the geoglyphs and do all the story so i will be showing you guys the geoglyph locations i have all 12 10 of them done we got one here one right here one down below it one right next to it you guys can see all the geoglyphs on my map i'm just kind of going over there and showing it because there is a huge cutscene on every single one of these geoglyphs every time you catch the uh, or get the tier of the dragon so here is all the locations of all of them this one right here will actually pop up after you do all the geoglyphs it is the final one and it actually shows you where the master sword is so if you do not know where the master sword is that is going to show it to you so do all the geoglyphs do all that good stuff and then do this last one and it'll show you that the master sword is actually on the light dragon and the light dragon obviously in the sky all the way up in the sky area but after that you actually want to do this quest which is going to lead you to the great hyrule forest inside the korok forest and the only way to get there is going to be through the depths and lucky for us there is a nice little chasm right here in order to get down there so that is exactly where we are heading to but you guys are probably wondering like yeah jeans i get it um you want to do the story, you want to see, see all that, but why do we have to do this quest in order to get the Master Sword? If you do this quest right here, it will actually bring the Light Dragon down significantly. So it's actually really, really hard to get to if you don't do this quest. And then once you do this quest, it will drop like thousands of meters in altitude, and it will make your life 10 times easier. So for this quest, I actually haven't done it yet. I actually saved it for you guys. You're going to want to go over to this area right here, right above Lookout Landing into the top right of the... Uh, of the castle and you're just gonna want run and go to the chasm because again you cannot get there through the sky because korok forest will uh wait you out and you cannot get there in the land anymore you still you used to be able to get into there in the land in breath of the wild but since there's a depth they really want you to use it which is really cool i really do like that they added this into the game that going through the depths because again i haven't really like explored the depths at all besides this time and there's definitely a lot more down the depths i've just been exploring so much on the land so it's been wild for me but let me just make sure i'm going the right way which i am and another heads up here to do this quest you're gonna have to fight a boss and the boss is actually really strong so you kind of want to be prepared with some foods some good armor some good stuff so again i highly recommend playing through the game and not really getting the master sword until about like midway through the game or whenever you feel comfortable and ready to rock so, from here, we're going to want to head down here, and we're going to want to hop into this chasm right here. But it's kind of cool that in the last game, in Breath of the Wild, the Master Sword was in the Korok Forest. But now they take you back to the Korok Forest, and the Master Sword isn't there, but it helps you get the Master Sword. So, I'm going to head down into this chasm right here, head into the depths, which I have lit up already. But I will show you guys the path on where you have to go into the depths to get to the Korok Forest. So, you want to fly all the way down here, and mine is actually really dark. Okay, no, it's not. It's not too dark. But if you want to light this place up, obviously just take some bright seed, bright uh, bloom flowers, connect them to your arrows, and just shoot them around. Because they will actually light up the place pretty well. Look at that. Nice. So nice light. So as you guys can see, I have a few light routes down. But where we want to go on the map is going to be directly northwest over towards this Korok Grove kind of thing right here. So right about here is where we want to go. There's a, there's a uh, light route. And then that's the area we want to go to. So I'm actually just going to head it on foot just to show you guys how to actually just run there. So again, just northwest, you could probably see it. It's kind of like over towards that area because the spot that we want to go to is already illuminated. It is already lit up. But again, if you need some more light, just bring out your bright bloom seeds, shoot them up there and light up your uh, light up the ground. And then you also got these pose, which I believe you can actually like get stuff with them. But for now, I'm just going to collect them. Let's keep moving that way, making sure I'm going the right way. It is a little bit of a hefty walk, but it's nothing too crazy. It is nothing too crazy. But there is going to be a memory when you uh, get the Master Sword. I'm not going to be showing it because I don't want to spoil anything. And I'm not going to spoil... 
I'll show you guys who the boss is, but I won't I won't show the boss fight because I don't want this video to be like overwhelmingly long. So we're gonna have to head through all this gloom, trying to dodge it as much as we possibly can, and that's the area we wanna we wanna go to. Right there. That little I guess like building area. So from here, I'm just gonna actually do a shield hop. Actually, I don't have a shield initiated, which could have been good for us. Do I have a shield initiated? I want to do a shield hop. I do not. So from here, I'm just gonna put on my big shield because I'm gonna need it. Like I said, boss fight is actually really tough. We gotta be ready for it. We definitely gotta be ready for it. But of course there's gloom hands here. And you know what? I'm just gonna keep running. Or I might just fast travel to the position because these things are annoying. Actually, I can just do this. Give me my, my ancient blades. Screw these guys. Let's take one out. Oh god, this thing's on my tail. I'm gonna keep running. Can I shield surf? Get away? No, I cannot. Hey! Hey! Chill! 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 Okay, cool. We outran it. That <laughs> thing was mad annoying. <laughs> so annoying. Yo, those hands are crazy strong. Crazy strong. And speaking of crazy strong, there are plenty of them down at the boss fight too so it's not just the boss you're fighting you're fighting gloom hands as well again huge pain huge pain but yeah we make our way towards this area like i said it is northwest of where we started this is where we started we come in right into the middle here and we want to make our way right to here because like i said cannot get there from the from the ground you cannot get there from the sky so the only way to get through it is to the depths here and what do you want to do you want to go up to this middle part. There is light root, uh, like right near it, if you want to do it and create a fast travel point. But you want to go right into the middle here, and you can actually ascend right through this middle, which is actually really good. So we're gonna ascend up, bang, bringing us directly into the Korok Forest. And if you guys remember, in the Korok Forest in the last game, it was popping, it was jumping, all the Koroks were pretty much partying. But when you get in here, it is doom and gloom. It's an absolute mess here. It's an absolute mess. But there is a shrine right there. If you want to do the shrine, go for it. Definitely, I recommend it. Give you a fast travel point. But you want to come over here. There's a few silent princesses. princesses. But you want to come up here and walk on this rock. And you're going to see the Great Deku Tree. Like I said, this place is an absolute mess. It's usually jumping. And it's usually full of life. So you talk to the Great Deku Tree and he says, Nig, humph, my stomach is not well. So he's complaining. He's complaining. He says his stomach's not well. So what do you want to do? You want to find out where his stomach's at. And if you played last game, you can go inside my boy right here. Yep. You can go inside the Deku Tree. And you can see that there is like gloom and another chasm kind of going down inside of him. So down here is going to be the boss fight. Highly recommend saving. I highly recommend preparing. But we're going to go down there and fight this boss. I'm obviously going to show you guys the boss. But I'm not going to show you guys me fighting him the whole time. Because he is tough. I might die a couple times. But I don't want to like make this video too long. So we're going to hop down into the Deku Tree Chasm. Making sure we're not hitting the walls. Because you will die if you hit the, hit the walls from fall damage. So you make your way down. And something I also recommend is shooting a, f a few bright bloom flowers around this place. Lighten it up. Maybe just putting a few on the wall. All that good stuff. And making sure you have a bow ready to go. Because again, this one's going to be tough. So once you start this match, or not this match, once you get in here, the gloom hands are going to be here. And you know what? I have like these ancient arrows. I'm pretty sure I could just take them out. Oh no, this could be bad. This could be bad. So I might die here and you guys might see it. Yep, I'm going to die here. No problem. No problem I'm going to die here. Yep, I'm 100% dead. We'll be back. All right, we're back. We're finishing off the, the gloom hands right now. I'm shooting them with diamond arrows because I have so many diamonds. But yeah, once you finish off all these guys, oh no, leave me alone. Once you finish off all these guys, you can actually fight the boss. So the boss comes out here and it is going to be Phantom Ganon. Look at this thing, it looks insane. It follows itself with the sword and it has, oh my God, and it has gloom all around. So you wanna stay out of the gloom as much as possible. And another recommendation, for your attacks are gonna be your best friends. And of course I don't have a sword equipped. That's just ridiculous. So you want to be ready to attack this thing and stay out of its gloom. Because again, gloom is a pain. So here we go. Block a shot. I'm trying to time its attacks right. And he's coming after me this way. And I'm just blocking. But again, the gloom is just such a problem. It is such a problem. So again, flurry attacks, flurry rushes are going to be your best friends. And I can't even land one right now. It's kind of annoying me. Can you attack me? I can do a backflip. And I missed it. I missed it. Trying to get the flurry attack, and he's hitting hard. He's hitting hard. So we'll be back after we defeat this thing. So guys, we are nearing the end of our fight here. Got him down to low HP. I'm ready to pretty much finish him off. 
But I gotta make sure I can dodge an attack or something. There we go, that works. And I'm just gonna slash him up and finish him off. So once you finish off the Phantom Ganon, he is just gonna die out. He is gonna give you some very, very cool items. He gives you a Gloom Sword and something else. I forget what the other thing is. Oh, it's a really strong bow. Actually, a really cool bow. And he's gonna destroy all the gloom within the Deku Tree's stomach. So his stomach pain's gonna go away. And when you get back up to the surface, it's gonna be a party back up there. It's gonna be awesome. It is gonna be awesome. So we defeat the Phantom Ganon. We are ready to get rocking yet again. And everything returns to peace inside the Korok Forest. Look, my boys are even coming down here hanging out with us, which I absolutely love. <laughs> I absolutely love it. There he is. You did it. Thank you so much, Mr. Hero. The great Deku Tree is waiting for you in the Korok Forest. So the Koroks are like, hey, yo, you're the man. And they help us out. But again, they are going to drop some very good items. I have a few diamonds over here for my arrows. But uh, where is my man's items? Where'd I kill this guy? Right here. You get some dark clumps. Oh, these are dark clumps. And you get this bow right here, which is going to be the Demon King bow. It's a magical bow that you get from him, and it does more power the more hearts you have. So I would definitely highly recommend saving it for late game. It's really, really cool. And then you got the Gloom Sword over here, which I definitely want to hold. I'm going to drop a weapon on it. Actually, I'm just going to throw a Slinal Sword because it is badly damaged. And I'm just going to save the Gloom Sword for later because it's a very cool sword. And for now, I guess I'll just throw on like a spear that I have. So, we want to get back up to the surface. There should be little crevices that you can just, like, ascend through. And I'm trying to find them. Will this one be one? Maybe, maybe, no. No, no, no. How can I ascend up? I Actually, it should be, like, right here. I think it's, like, right here. A little crevice? Anywhere? There's a way to ascend up. Up could be right here. Can I ascend through these things? I think I just keep ascending up. Which is really cool. So, you're going to want to make your way back up to the Korok Forest. And this actually wasn't the thing that I wanted to go towards. But can I go up this way? I probably can. But no, there's a faster way. Let me figure this one out. Let me figure this one out. Let me actually light this place up with some bloom seeds. Make it a little bit brighter. Because my other ones went away, which kind of suck. Oh, no, they didn't. But there should be... Where's my crevice at? Is this? No, it's not. It's near one of these things. And I can't figure it out. I don't know why. I do not know why. Is it right here? It's right next to one of these things. Up, oh, it might be right here. Can I do it here? No. Check the next one. We're just going to keep moving. Checking these things. It's not right there. Again, it's in like this little crevice. It's so right here. No. It's not there. Which means it's got to be over here. And I still can't find it. But you can actually... You know, we'll make life ten times easier. You can actually fast travel back to the shrine. How about that? That's like why I said do your, do your little shrine. Make sure you have a fast travel point. So we're going to fast travel back to the shrine. Go back to the Deku Forest, and we're going to talk to the Great Deku Tree, who's actually going to have a memory. I'm not going to showcase it because it is part of the story, and I really don't want to spoil the story. But Hestu is actually here, and I'm pretty sure he's here to stay. Usually he's at Lookout Landing, but now that you do this request, he is here to stay, and he's back for more. So we're going to head up here. We're going to talk to the Great Deku Tree, and he is going to present us with a memory, which I'm not going to be showing you guys. After you talk to the Great Deku Tree, do the memory... He's going to be prompted back here talking to you and he's going to show you exactly where the master sword is in this game he marks you out a point it goes on your map but the weird thing about this point is it keeps moving and like i mentioned in the beginning it is because it is on the light dragon and if you did the story did all the geoglyphs saw all the memories it's really cool and it kind of explains a lot it is actually really really cool i highly recommend doing that but we get prompted with this quest recovering the hero sword again it is going to be on our map now if we go to the sky island you can actually back out and where is that point at actually it's probably on this yep there it is look at it it's just a point that is moving it's actually not moving right now but i think if we go back and forth it's in a different spot now let's see yeah, it just keeps moving. So it is over there. It is up there. But from here, we actually want to just go to a sky island somewhere that you have and kind of somewhere near like Zonai devices because you are going to want to actually get some Zonai devices. So I'm going to actually travel over here. I'm going to pick up some Zonai devices and then I will be back with you guys. Instead of taking the skies and landing on top of the Light Dragon, I decided since Light Dragon is about right next to this tower, I'm going to shoot myself off of the tower and land on its head. So any way that you want to get to the Light Dragon after you do these quests, perfectly fine by me. A lot of people like to use the Zonai devices, but if he is near a tower, I highly recommend using a tower. And there is the Light Dragon right there. I actually have like a perfect little 
way of getting up there. And I actually want to change my armor back real quick. I like to have this armor on for the game. I got the champion's tunic. Got to rock that out. Got to rock out with the Hylian hood alongside with the Hylian trousers, right? I got to look professional here. I got to look professional. Definitely got to look professional. And I'm going to put my sword away. Definitely got to put my sword away. So I'm just going to remove that. And now I am ready to go. Actually, should I put the Hylian shield on too? I could put the Hylian shield on. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Give me that Hylian shield. I have it already. I already made a video. If you're looking to get the Hylian shield, make sure you go check out my videos. But yeah, we can now make our way to the Light Dragon. After that quest, it brings him down drastically. Amazingly drastically. Considering you would need like crazy, crazy zone eye devices to actually get to it. But here is the Light Dragon. We're going to be landing right on top of his head where the Master Sword is located. So, so cool. Such a cool quest to actually get it. It's way better than the last game. Considering the last game, it was like, hey, you can just walk up to the forest and grab this Master Sword whenever. No really quest, no really storyline involved. But if you guys did not know, you can actually walk on the dragons. And there is going to be like shards and stuff on the dragon's uh, scales. So if you want to get them, I highly recommend hopping on the dragon's back. Because look, right here, I'm going to get myself my first ever shard of the like dragon spike. I'm gonna head over here. I'm gonna keep heading up here. If you keep walking around, it's big spikes on its back. You should be able to find a few of them. The more the merrier, right? The more the merrier. But oh my god, we almost fell off. It's fine. It has uh it has little air drifts ways. So if you fall down, just pull out your glider again. But if you make your way to the top of the head, you can see the master sword is just located right on it, which is really cool. So we're gonna grab it. We are gonna get the master sword. And like I said, the only Thing that you need to actually get this is two wheels of stamina so we're gonna grab it we're gonna hold it we need two wheels of stamina we're gonna use up two full wheels and we're gonna pull the master sword out of the light dragon's head i think this is such a cool scene i really do i really do but like i said there is gonna be a memory i'm not gonna be showing it don't want to really do any spoilers but there it is that is how you get the master sword which is absolutely amazing it looks so cool. I love it. I love what they did with this game. Like I said, it is Breath of the Wild on steroids, just 10 times better. There we go. Two full wheels of stamina used. Able to pull out this Master Sword and trigger a cutscene at the same time. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. We obtain the Master Sword. It looks absolutely amazing and the cutscene was awesome like i said the story is absolutely amazing so i highly recommend going through the story and doing the master sword the right way instead of just finding the light dragon as soon as possible and getting it but such a cool way to actually implement the master sword probably the best the franchise has ever done it but the light dragon's going to pop off here he's going to drop us off and we officially attain the master sword see you later light dragon i love you so much Thank you so much for this precious little item. And there it is, the Master Sword. The legendary sword that seals the darkness. Its corruption was healed by its time with the Light Dragon. The blade gleams with a sacred luster that can oppose the Demon King. Absolutely amazing. Love it, love it, love it. But guys... That is going to be it for today's video. If you did enjoy the content, don't forget to smash that like button. And if you're new here, click that big red subscribe button so you know when all of my videos go live. Seriously, you guys rock out. Make sure you spread some positive today, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out, everybody.